Today's guest is a British Brazilian entrepreneur and business coach. She's the host of the podcast Thrivepreneur, and she helps female entrepreneurs to start and grow an online business. Please welcome to the show, Marta Sampson. Hey, Marta, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm very well. Thank you, James. It's an honor to be here. Yeah, great to have you. Okay. So I'm, cool. I'm really, really excited about your story because I don't know too much about you. Um, okay. So let's dive into it. T tell us who you are. What is your story? Yes. So my name is Martha Samson. I am a business coach and then a podcaster as well. I'm originally from Brazil, as you can probably see my strong accent. Some people think I'm French, but I'm not French. So I'm from Brazil, from the northeast of Brazil. I have been living in London for over almost 20 years. 21 years going to be this year and then yeah so I'm a mom I was a single mom and then I married again so it's been like um, immigrated in UK and building my career again it has been a learning curve um, in Brazil I used to work uh, in a law firm so here in UK I had to retrain myself And then I end up working with a lot of um, engineers. So I'm um, not an engineer, but I work in the transport industry in UK, a lot of projects. I love to work with people. Majority of the people I work in UK, it was a male-dominate um, industry. And there was a little girl there speaking this strong accent. I learned a lot. <laughs> I'm I'm very, very nice. I like to work with the guys. And then in 2015, I something was burning inside of me. And then I went to this new journey. I decided to work part-time with the realm. And then I came back with this personal development. And then I took a diploma in personal development coach. And I started mm -hmm. to mentor some friends of mine who had a business, had no idea how to make it plan for more sales or marketing and through that and I started slowly getting more clients and then 2018 I decided it's a time for podcasting here I am today so the pandemic is taking me to a new journey so and then I'm very excited for 2021. Yeah awesome so how did you end up like growing up in Brazil and then ending up in the UK how did that happen? <laughs> So that was um, the dream of to be living outside of Brazil. That was the dream to uh, immigrate. I was thinking to go to US, hmm. but then the opportunity came into UK because we had a friend here and then my previous um, husband had a few friends here and then he came into UK and then after, and then I came with my baby. She was five years old uh, when she came here. So she's now a grown up a woman. Yeah, she's doing very well. She's um, she, she's she's doing very well. My daughter only had one. So and then I the relationships um, didn't go so well. It's <laughs> that's, a, that's the, life. That's life. I can laugh it today, but I was crying that time. <laughs> I could not speak English and the guy mess around with me. But anyway. So I decided to go back to Brazil. And that time my mom knew that I couldn't be living. My dream was to be living elsewhere. And then my mom said, you have to go back and then just build up your life. Just go back with your daughter. Mm. And then I came back and I had to uh, do everything all over again. And in, 20, in 2000, Uh, in five, so I met this English guy. So that's why life was just like uh, this dreaming from Brazil to here took me to from being in the relationship to be a single mom and then to be married again. But I'm mean, happy, happy married. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so, so, so now, now, now you're 100% business coach, and like, like I'm just a little bit different focus. So, tell us about your business. What are you doing? Yeah, the business, I work mainly with the women. So I have like um, two 
programs I do like one is like a um, group coaching and the yeah. other one I call more like a VIP which is one-to-one which we dive into more details what the business um, needs so my um, expertise and my all what I offer my clients it's like it's a get a clarity because especially women we go it's a completely different I think guys when they go put a business work different about women with the emotional with all the holocaust we're going through to be <laughs> successful well the thermometer is going up and down so we needed to have that to support that's where i came in with the strategy how i can support you how we can look into your marketing your sales and then also um the revenue because um a lot of people i've been seeing a lot of clients sometimes they be doing business and then they not get any revenue but it mm. seemed to be like a hobby i said no if it's a hobby i just like you package this car because you're gonna need a petrol yeah yeah That's and cost money one. yeah yeah so how, how what how do you work then when you when you do group coaching is it all online or do, do you do offline online so uh, the group of coaching called uh, Smart Woman. So it's a, like it's a four week intensive of um, group coaching. So it's a closed group. Mm. What I tended to do, I come in live and the girls also. We have like um, the, the strategy, of what are we going to be doing from week one to four? And then I also come every day and they show one tip. And then once a week, we do like a group coaching. So hmm. sometimes some of the girls want something in private. It's always someone that wants to be sharing something about your business. Hmm. And then I am available on WhatsApp or uh, Facebook Messenger. It used to be very helpful to get the people to hmm. connect with. But the four weeks, um, I thought about the four weeks because... I did before previous three months coach and seemed to be like something was um, not getting um, results. And then I said, when you have only four weeks or you work those four weeks or otherwise you don't get anywhere. I think four weeks is shorter and the four weeks seem to be getting the results. So three months I don't do anymore. Okay. So is it then that, that, People who have been in this group coaching the four weeks, are they then afterwards often choosing you to you as a personal coach more one-on-one -on -one, or how is that working? Yeah, some of the girls sometimes they come back. Some of the other girls sometimes work with some of my other uh, friends because um, I don't do like a funnels or those kind of things. Sometimes mm -hmm. people who when they finish the four weeks, they need to invest in investing money to do a proper ads or a funnel or make some kind of uh, design. I'm not a designer, so I do have some friends that can refer. Mm -hmm. And then some of them, they come back because they feel like, um, oh, I have not made a progress. I want to just to have like another session with you and then they pay separated mm. like maybe some time they pay one or two sessions just to get focus on what yeah. they want awesome and 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 how it is when when people are starting with you directly one-on-one -on -one, who haven't been part of the group coaching how is that working oh they are one-to-one -one when they're not part of the group so we do have a strategy we have like a questionnaire um to send it to see what they need it and what and they can see my profile what i can help them um so this they pay for one session to see if i'm the right coach for them i'm very happy because as a coach sometimes you see you start work with someone but you are not the right one yeah, <laughs> so i don't want yeah. people to waste their money i would prefer like if i'm the right girl i can help you if i'm not the right girl you just have to find someone that you can uh, think that is best for you so um when is um like I think before it was easier to find the people uh, when they're going to work one to one because when I was delivering a workshop, if people get the feeling of uh, your energy, your the way you flow with things. Mm. But now online, as I am online, but my 
content is not very strategically online. I've been working at the moment with some marketing people to get some nice videos there to mm. explain more clearly what I could be helping people. Yeah. Yeah, that's always a struggle. When, when you have been successful in the physical world, then going online and having, having both that, yeah, it's a learning curve. I know. COVID has just put me, you know, I was there, but I was doing the live, but and then I said, what is the content? So I'm thinking about at the moment, shall I do a course? Shall I create a course? Shall I do um, just like a, with the podcast in it? What else I can do more? Maybe just the strategy going forward is just to show more online and mm. be more visible mm. because that's the going forward. Yeah, yeah I agree. So just going a little bit back into your story again. So you have been um, working in a large company and, and then you, you jumped into your own business. How was that? How, what, what was making that decision? How did um, you go about? Yeah, so making that decision was you know, back, back home in Brazil when I was 19 years old. I was working in this electronic firm it was my first um, job in Brazil and then I started to selling computers and printer for home mm. so always that burning side of me I want to have something I want to have something but at the same time we I was working corporate back home I was corporate in here and then something was missing I love to be working in a team I really enjoy to be working in the engineering company but something every day I was looking to the boardroom I was looking to those meeting big meeting and then I would just say so what are you doing here Martha <laughs> what are you doing here and then my friends when my colleagues I used to say like I have a mission and they people don't understand when you want to achieve when you have a goal inside of you you want to achieve something when I started to do my personal development course I was still working full time mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. academy I did with the coaching academy we had to do 60 sessions with people oh, I yeah. used to go to the office seven in the morning because we had the flexible hours 3.30, yeah. I would leave work and then I would start to coaching people. And then my colleague would say, why are you coming so early? What is this are you doing? People don't understand when you really want to achieve something. And then I was full time. And then I said, you know, if I continue doing this, I'm not going to be able to be coaching people because it was very tired. Mm -hmm. And then I had my daughter was in university that time. And then my husband did understand as well because I don't have more time for him. He was like, everything you're doing now is for this personal development. I'm losing my wife. <laughs> <laughs> and then I decided I have to work part time. So I, I had a meeting with my, my manager, but she said there was no opportunity for part time uh, opportunity. Mm. So I, sometimes you do have to make a decision. So I, I made a decision just to leave the job. I said, you know, I was starting looking for part-time job. Nothing was coming up. Nothing, nothing. And I said, I'm going to come in out. And then I left the job, continued my course. Um, mm -hmm. And then a group of friends um, said, are we going on mission to Rwanda? And then I said, you know, I think I'm just going to go on mission as well with these people. I need to do something to be helping people. They start fundraising. I went away I just a week before I traveled to this mission trip. And then I had a call. I did not know. Someone saw my CV online and then he said, like, oh, there is this job at Siemens. It's a very well-known company. Mm -hmm. And then um, and I said, okay. Ah, okay. So I went for the interview. The guy was asking me everything. And when I said I was going on a mission for a week, and then straight away he was thinking, oh, maybe I'm not the right candidate. Mm -hmm. But and then he called me again. He said, you know, I really like you, but are you serious for, for this job? I said, what do you mean? 
And they said, no, because it's not like you have a strong personal development profile because people see you online. It's like, oh, gosh. And then I had said, no, yes, I'm, I'm for part time. And then he said, but OK, so how about if you start four days and then after we can go for three days? And then so that was the learning curve to be leaving the full time to go and doing part time and then still hustling every day. You know, you have to do something because. You have to go on networking and then you have to distribute to this card. I done all that to get yeah. all my clients. Yeah. So many coffees, weekends. Oh gosh. We've was so many community, so many speaking group, free this and that until people start to pay you. So and then you feel like what else I need to do? I think just the online marketing injection of uh, money at the moment and that's it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> interesting. So, how do you how do, how do you tell or how do you explain these things to your your clients when they're starting their own business? Do you tell them it will be hard, or how do you do that? So, I think I always say to people, you have to believe in the decision you're making. Mm -hmm. Without to believe in that, I could leave Brazil to come into UK. I would not. Otherwise, I would be in Brazil again. Yeah. I, I said, oh, every time I say to people, my, when I had my dream to live outside of Brazil, and my life in Brazil was hard, was not easy. My mom was a widow and my dad had a very good job. And, and then when he passed away, we didn't have enough funds coming in mm. and I had to do everything to be here. I used to saving my money and I buy $50 because that was the currency. If you don't have the currency, people would laugh. My sister would laugh at me. And then I said, if you don't believe, because that was my belief. I always said to my mom, I'm not going to be leaving this country. He is yeah. hard. I don't yeah. want to be leaving here. I don't want my child born and then be leaving this growing up as hard as I'm going through. No, 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 I was not a mom. And mm -hmm. then I always say to my client, without that burning belief inside of you, the decision you made, it's going to be successful. Yeah, it's not love gonna that. work. Yeah. And that's the belief. And that's where I, I love that because there are so many people out there who are trying to sell you something. Hey, tomorrow you will be successful. Hey, mm. do do this and pay me for it and, and you will be successful tomorrow. But it's just, at least in my experience, I've never seen anyone who is successful in two days, three days, four days or whatever. No. It's not going to work. No. You need you need to work your ass off to, to get somewhere. And that's just specifically in the beginning, like you said, you need to build a network. You need to work with people you meet to, need to meet. Like in the old days, give them your card and do things for free and then slowly it gets somewhere yeah it just takes time <laughs> takes time yeah, yeah it's true we'd love to go into into innovation so how do you how do you see innovation for yourself for your business well, I think with the pandemic, that word took me into a very different direction, <laughs> especially uh, when we talk about um, the online content. I had a lot of uh, content which was not very strategically online. Mm -hmm. um, so innovation for me, just taking the direction from where my business was and innovating, what do I need to do? Um, to make it is uh, different. What do I need um, to change? And then also, what do I need myself and matter? What do I need to do every day? Because sometimes I don't feel that every day I want to appear on a camera. Yeah, I, I understand. <laughs> I don't feel, I don't feel. So it may be different, but women, the makeup, the hair, the clothes, it's a lot of contents out there. <laughs> yeah, that's easier for me. Yeah, see? <laughs> <laughs> so, and then we we just have to innovate. So the innovation is just like, for me, at the moment, that word took me to think like, um, what do I need to innovate in my business? And what I need to innovate about myself and um, one of the things I have been working at the moment as I 
don't have a time to be every day on the camera. I think especially when we're doing the service business, there are day you are on fire. There are day my creativity is so big. There's some day my creativity is not so big, which I have more to develop it and those listen and then read my books and do all those kind of things. So what I'm doing at the moment is just like packing everything. The day I feel I am on fire, that's the day I'm recording everything. Mm -hmm. Even with the podcast, the day I feel on fire, that's the day I'm, I can do 10 interviews or I can do six interviews. And then I already have a lot of content out there that is going to be helping me because I feel that when you we are innovate the way we're doing things on our business, that's how our business can flourish uh, fast and then we can thrive. Yeah, I love that. That's that's so true. How, how is it um, when when you work with your clients? Um, are they if we, if we just look into technology topics? So when are they technology savvy? Are they into all of these things or are they like? like completely beginners and everything? Some of them are completely beginners. Some of the people, I see some of the, the, the ladies, I think they don't want to say that they have that day. They are not feeling so well to be on a camera. As I said, I'm a coach. I have other people who are helping me, my mentors and everything. Hmm. I know they push us, but there's some people sometimes, oh, shall we just don't do over the phone? And then <laughs> I know <laughs> to see them that day yeah. so that way you i have a suggested dig deeper uh, asking those tough questions what you what why you don't want to be on a camera because if you're building a business it's going to help you blah 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 some people come some people sometimes they don't come in some people cry they're going through things so um yeah so do, do i understand you right that what well, of course you help them with your biz with their business when you coach them but it's not just their business it's there as a total person it's the life yeah. it's the life because you know it's like if your life always i said the foundation to build a business is not like only to have the business plan and the idea if things in your, in your life your health it's not so good and thing is not going to work because we require so much energy, so much energy. And the momentum as well, this business taking us. So um, I had instance doing this business two years ago that my energy was not the way it was because I I had to look after my health. I had to go to and then doing checkup. I always say to people, don't just stay um with that feeling, do the investigation because if things are not going well, you just have to question. They're not like buying just like one protein or those shaking is going to just make you <laughs> to feel uh, happier. No, you just need to dig deep inside of you. What is this thing that's coming back every mm -hmm. day? Yeah, yeah, see that definitely. <laughs> so, I want to transition now. I have always a couple of questions I'm asking everyone, starting up with a very broad one. So if you if you could work with a project or uh, an, an an idea that's that's felt and and touched by every human being on earth, so what project, what idea would it be, and why would it be that idea? That idea with the project. So the project basically is just to. Get results. I know I'm thinking I'm working on my results and there is so many things we want to get results in life. And there's so many parts that keep it missing because we need help. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, a bigger project, what can I do to help someone to get that result, but that result that's going to be the result they want is not that only because I am a coach, I wanted to yeah. become a successful. Yeah. It's just for them to feel happier because, you know, I paid uh, for coaches before that they was like uh, bouncing me because they want uh, to finish it for them to get the testimonial. But there was part of um, 
the process. I was not understanding about the people was not um, making clear mm. to me. I oh, don't know, everything is going to be right. Everything's going to be, and it's not everything's going to be right. They're part like the client. They don't understand. You have just to be patient with people. And then some people require more time. And some people can go fast, faster. But for me, I just, if I would work making a project, especially in, now in this uh, pandemic, so many things has changed. So many people has uh, lost their jobs. So many businesses closing. What can we do to make those people to yeah. achieve their goals? And, and just a result because everyone who are in business, you want to make a revenue. Sometimes it's not a very, it's not these six figures. And just that portion that can make people to slowly grow in year by year. Mm. Yeah, great one. If you if you look forward a year from now, where 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 will you be? What what has happened? Well, um, visibility online and that Thrive Apprenteur podcast will be uh, really visible for a lot of uh, um, entrepreneur. It's not about me and the podcast I'm doing similar to yours. It's get connected with people, see what the people out there doing, because I think like when we support each other, we can grow fast. So it's just to also to have the podcast more visible and then to be visible and then um, be connected with the right um, audience because um, sometimes we can be out there and then we can waste in our time with the wrong audience. I had that before. So I don't want in a year time had the same experience. Yeah. No way. How, how do you keep yourself up to date? How, what are the things you, you inform yourself getting getting it into business, getting on the other topics that are important for your life? So uh, I am in a part with some groups as well, which help. I'm not on uh, my own. So I am inside some community which helping me. And then also it's just um, I like to research. I'm very curious. I'm always like uh, looking to see what um, it's out there that could be um, helping me to grow. What do I need to learn? Uh, because the, every day I have to learn something. I said, oh, if I sometimes I look back and say, if I knew that, leave it elsewhere. <laughs> and because it's a double for me. Anything I learn has to be dual language when you're bilingual. Yeah. So it's just like a double language all the time. I have to check things in English and then I have to check in Portuguese because I work with some people in Brazil and then here in London as well. So it's just like a yeah, it's a develop. It's a continual development. Yeah, it's quite funny that you're saying it. I so I'm German originally, but I it's so hard for me to coach someone on business topics in German because I've just done it most of the time in English. In English, eh? it's so difficult to just find the right words in your in your native language. It's, it's quite funny. It's true. It's yeah. true. So. How can people find you? How can people reach out to you? Okay, I'm, a, I'm on Instagram as a Marta, M-A-R-T-A dot Samson, S-A-M-S-O-N. And I'm on Facebook as well. So at the moment, it's, I just keep it in these two platforms. People can find me. And then the podcast is just Tribe Prone. You can find on uh, Apple Podcasts, Institution. So if you just search on Google Marta Samson, I think my name can come quite easily as well. Yeah. Awesome. Well, it's a pleasure talking to you, Marta. Um, it, it's it's really great to to have another coach on 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 the show. Thank you very much for being on my show. It has been a pleasure. Thank you, James. I love it, your podcast, and then keep connected. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye. Take me to another place where the fairy tales don't end. Magic, magical land, magic, magical land. To another place where the fairy tales don't end.